Brachial Plexus, Wikipedia article audio. The brachial plexus is a network of nerves formed by the anterior rami of the lower four cervical nerves and first thoracic nerve. This plexus extends from the spinal cord, through the cervicoaxillary canal in the neck, over the first rib, and into the armpit. It supplies afferent and efferent nerve fibers to the chest, shoulder, arm, and hand. The brachial plexus is divided into five roots, three trunks, six divisions, three anterior and three posterior, three cords, and five branches. There are five terminal branches and numerous other preterminal or collateral branches, such as the subscapular nerve, the thoracodorsal nerve, and the long thoracic nerve, that leave the plexus at various points along its length. A common structure used to identify part of the brachial plexus in cadaver dissections is the M or W shape made by the musculocutaneous nerve, lateral cord, median nerve, medial cord, and ulnar nerve. Structure Roots The five roots are the five anterior rami of the spinal nerves, after they have given off their segmental supply to the muscles of the neck. The brachial plexus emerges at five different levels, C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. C5 and C6 merge to establish the upper trunk, C7 continuously forms the middle trunk, and C8 and T1 merge to establish the lower trunk. Prefixed or postfixed formations in some cases involve C4 or T2 respectively. The dorsal scapular nerve comes from the superior trunk and innervates the rhomboid muscles which retract the scapula. The subclavian nerve originates in both C5 and C6 and innervates the subclavius, a muscle that involves lifting the first ribs during respiration. The long thoracic nerve arises from C5, C6, and C7. This nerve innervates the serratus anterior, which draws the scapula laterally and is the prime mover in all forward-reaching and pushing actions. These roots merge to form three trunks. Each trunk then splits in two, to form six divisions. These six divisions regroup to become the three cords or large fiber bundles. The cords are named by their position with respect to the axillary artery. The branches are listed below. Most branch from the cords, but a few branch directly from earlier structures. The five on the left are considered terminal branches. These terminal branches are the musculocutaneous nerve, the axillary nerve, the radial nerve, the median nerve, and the ulnar nerve. Due to both emerging from the lateral cord the musculocutaneous nerve and the median nerve are well connected. The musculocutaneous nerve has even been shown to send a branch to the median nerve further connecting them. There have been several variations reported in the branching pattern but these are very rare. Trunks Bold indicates primary spinal root component of nerve. Italics indicate spinal roots that frequently, but not always, contribute to the nerve. Divisions First and second lumbrical muscles Muscles of the thenar eminence by a recurrent thenar branch The brachial plexus is responsible for cutaneous and muscular innervation of the entire upper limb, with two exceptions the trapezius muscle innervated by the spinal accessory nerve and an area of skin near the axilla innervated by the intercostobrachial nerve. The brachial plexus communicates through the sympathetic trunk via gray rami communicantes that join the plexus roots. The terminal branches of the brachial plexus all have specific sensory, motor, and proprioceptive functions. Cords Lesions can lead to severe functional impairment. Branches 
brachial plexus injury affects cutaneous sensations and movements in the upper limb. They can be caused by stretching, diseases, and wounds to the lateral cervical region of the neck or the axilla. Depending on the location of the injury, the signs and symptoms can range from complete paralysis to anesthesia. Testing the patient's ability to perform movements and comparing it to their normal side is a method to assess the degree of paralysis. A common brachial plexus injury is from a hard landing where the shoulder widely separates from the neck. These stretches can cause ruptures to the superior portions of the brachial plexus or avulse the roots from the spinal cord. Upper brachial plexus injuries are frequent in newborns when excessive stretching of the neck occurs during delivery. Studies have shown a relationship between birth weight and brachial plexus injuries, however, the number of cesarean deliveries necessary to prevent a single injury is high at most birth weights. For the upper brachial plexus injuries, Paralysis occurs in those muscles supplied by C5 and C6 like the deltoid, biceps, brachialis, and brachioradialis. A loss of sensation in the lateral aspect of the upper limb is also common with such injuries. An inferior brachial plexus injury is far less common, but can occur when a person grasps something to break a fall or a baby's upper limb is pulled excessively during delivery. In this case, the short muscles of the hand would be affected and cause the inability to form a full fist position. Diagram To differentiate between preganglionic and postganglionic injury, clinical examination requires that the physician keep the following points in mind. Preganglionic injuries cause loss of sensation above the level of the clavicle, pain in an otherwise insensate hand, ipsilateral Horner's syndrome, and loss of function of muscles supplied by branches arising directly from roots i.e., long thoracic nerve palsy leading to winging of scapula and elevation of ipsilateral diaphragm due to phrenic nerve palsy. Acute brachial plexus neuritis is a neurological disorder that is characterized by the onset of severe pain in the shoulder region. Additionally, the compression of cords can cause pain radiating down the arm, numbness, paresthesia, erythema, and weakness of the hands. This kind of injury is common for people who have prolonged hyperabduction of the arm when they are performing tasks above their head. Specific branches Brachial plexus injuries are injuries that affect the nerves that carry signals from the spine to the shoulder. This can be caused by the shoulder being pushed down and the head being pulled up, which stretches or tears the nerves. Injuries associated with malpositioning commonly affect the brachial plexus nerves, rather than other peripheral nerve groups. Due to the brachial plexus nerves being very sensitive to position, there are very limited ways of preventing such injuries. The most common victims of brachial plexus injuries consist of victims of motor vehicle accidents and newborns. Motorcyclists who are involved in accidents are very susceptible to brachial plexus injuries due to the nature of the collision. Brachial plexus injuries were identified in 54 of 4,538 patients presenting to a regional trauma facility. Motor vehicle accidents were the most frequent cause overall. Many of these patients were forced to undergo reconstructive surgery. During physical therapy, the position of the brachial plexus became very important to avoid further damage. The risk can be reduced by thorough release of the tissues from the inferior surface of the clavicle before mobilization of the fracture fragments. By wearing protective gear, like a helmet, a motorcyclist can help prevent nerve damage after collisions. One sports injury that is becoming prevalent in contact sports, particularly in the sport of American football, is called a stinger. 
An athlete can incur this injury in a collision that can cause cervical axial compression, flexion, or extension of nerve roots or terminal branches of the brachial plexus. In a study conducted on football players at United States Military Academy, researchers found that the most common mechanism of injury is, the compression of the fixed brachial plexus between the shoulder pad and the superior medial scapula when the pad is pushed into the area of herbs point, where the brachial plexus is most superficial. The result of this is a burning or stinging pain that radiates from the region of the neck to the fingertips. Although this injury causes only a temporary sensation, in some cases it can cause chronic symptoms. Most penetration wounds require immediate treatment and are not as easy to repair. For example, a deep knife wound to the brachial plexus could damage and slash or sever the nerve. According to where the cut was made, it could inhibit action potentials needed to innervate that nerve's specific muscle or muscles. Function Brachial plexus injuries can occur during the delivery of newborns when after the delivery of the head, the anterior shoulder of the infant cannot pass below the pubic symphysis without manipulation. This manipulation can cause the baby's shoulder to stretch, which can damage the brachial plexus to varying degrees. This type of injury is referred to as shoulder dystocia. Shoulder dystocia can cause obstetric brachial plexus palsy, which is the actual injury to the brachial plexus. The incidence of OBPP in the United States is 1.5 per 1,000 births, while it is lower in the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. While there are no known risk factors for OBPP, if a newborn does have shoulder dystocia it increases their risk for OBPP 100-fold. Nerve damage has been connected to birth weight with larger newborns being more susceptible to the injury but it also has to do with the delivery methods. Although very hard to prevent during live birth, doctors must be able to deliver a newborn with precise and gentle movements to decrease chances of injuring the child. Clinical Significance Tumors that may occur in the brachial plexus are schwannomas, neurofibromas and malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors. Superior or upper, middle, inferior or lower. Imaging of the brachial plexus can be done effectively by using a higher magnetic strength MRI scanner like 1.5T or more. It is impossible to evaluate the brachial plexuses with plain X-ray, CT, and ultrasound scanning can manage to view the plexuses to an extent, hence MRI is preferred in imaging brachial plexus over other imaging modalities due to its multi-planar capability and the tissue contrast difference between brachial plexus and adjacent vessels. The plexuses are best imaged in coronal and sagittal planes but axial images give an idea about the nerve roots. Generally, T1WI and T2WI images are used in various planes for the imaging, but new sequences like Mr. Myelolography, Fiesta 3D and T2Cube are also used in addition to the basic sequences to gather more information to evaluate the anatomy more. Mind map showing branches of brachial plexus Anterior divisions of the upper, middle, and lower trunks, posterior divisions of the upper, middle, and lower trunks. When observing the body in an anatomical position, the anterior divisions are superficial to the posterior divisions. The axillary artery and its branches. Injury. Definition. Motorcycle accidents. Sports injuries Nerves in the infraclavicular portion of the right brachial plexus in the axillary fossa. The posterior cord is formed from the three posterior divisions of the trunks, the lateral cord is formed from the anterior divisions of the upper and middle trunks, 
the medial cord is simply a continuation of the anterior division of the lower trunk. Cutaneous nerves of right upper extremity Diagram of segmental distribution of the cutaneous nerves of the right upper extremity The right sympathetic chain and its connections with the thoracic, abdominal, and pelvic plexuses Dissection of brachial plexus Brachial plexus Brachial plexus Penetrating wounds Brachial plexus Spinal cord Brachial plexus Cerebrum. Inferior view. Deep dissection Injuries during birth Tumors Imaging In anesthetics Bibliography